Hi, hello to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This beautiful Sunday where we are discussing the Nigerian constitution. Over the past few days and weeks, there's been a, a bit of tension across the country because we just got tired of different things, starting with the with the behavior of this a special unit within the Nigeria police called the SARS. And it's called the special anti-robbery squad. Yeah, I hope I got that right. Anyway, NSARS was the rave of the moment. And then there were peaceful protests around the country. Something went out, went out of hand. We still don't have answers. But we've decided to take our anger, our unrest, our unease, our displeasure, our sadness, our broken hearts, and convert our energies to productivity and to promoting better knowledge. Because one of the challenges that we have as citizens of our country is many of us don't even have a clue what our civic rights are. And these rights are contained within what we call the Constitution. To discuss today with me and with all of us the Nigerian Constitution, I have some very distinguished lawyers from Primera Africa Legal, one of the most, one of the foremost law firms we have on the African continent. It's my privilege and um, privilege and honor to have them here with me. The, one of the partners at the law firm is my mentor, Senior Boma Alabi. I call her Senior Boma because we are of the same alma mater for Federal Government Girls College at Buloma. She was a class of 1983, where I'm the class of 1997. So, no, I did not meet her in school, <laughs> but I call her my senior nonetheless. I am, I am a, a firm believer in the country, Nigeria. I've always been. But I've also seen that our ignorance will rob us of the brighter future that we deserve, we desire, and we are trying to build. So allow me welcome to stage the wonderful lawyers who will be talking with us today about the Nigerian constitution. Right next to me is Sarah Uku. Everybody welcome her. She is also known to, known to us today as the special somebody. So if you hear me say special somebody, I'm referring to Sarah. <laughs> Sarah welcome. It's Thank so good you. to see you. Yeah. Right yeah. beneath Sarah is Mwawiya Yunusa. He is also known as Chairman Mao. <laughs> Welcome, Mao. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. And next to Mawia is Mr. Nonso Nkamuke, also known as Mozart. Everybody, welcome, Mozart. Hello, welcome, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We are honored to have you all. So, straight into the business. I will ask uh, Maria, please, if you don't mind, let's have you kick us off today. Tell us what the Constitution is and give us like a, an introduction into this all-important, almighty document called the Nigerian Constitution. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Daniel. Um, first of all, I will say um, the Constitution is um, the Nigerian supreme law, what we lawyers call the grand norm, that is meant or supposed to regulate um, our affairs and our life as a nation and as a people, in addition to some other laws. Um, what I will try to do maybe is to give us um, a brief overview of what the Constitution is all about so that um, we can have a brief background of what the Constitution is before we go into the detailed conversation. Now, um, the Nigerian Constitution um, came into effect um, in 1999 with the um, coming into effect of the First Republic. Now, the Constitution is made up of um, eight chapters and each chapter make some specific and special provision that is meant to regulate us. Now, um, chapter one of the Constitution deals with what we lawyers will always call the supremacy of the Constitution. Um, what makes the Constitution a supreme law 
above every other law in Nigeria. Now, um, that chapter always deal with, also deal with the indivisibility and the sovereignty of the Nigerian state. It has the legislative and the executive powers, the judicial powers. It has the local government and then issues that will have to do with boundary adjustment and um, issues that will have to do with creation of states and prohibition of state religion. Now, um, if you look at the next chapter of the Constitution, which is the second chapter about chapter two, it has what we call the fundamental objectives and the directive principle of the state policy. What lawyers will tell you, the um, non-justiciable rights, that's the rights that are not enforceable or the right that you cannot go to court and claim. And for me, honestly, as a person, I think these are the most important rights because these are where our rights as citizens are provided in terms of our political right, in terms of our economic right, in terms of our social right, in terms of our education right, environmental, foreign policy objective, and all sort of rights that ordinarily should be something that I should go to any court in Nigeria and claim, but they say is not justiciable. Now, um, the third chapter deals with um, things that will have to do with citizenship, what confers on me and you the right to call ourselves Nigeria or, or to, the right to call ourselves citizens of this country. Um, it has a lot of provision on how a person can be a citizen of Nigeria or when a person is said to be a citizen of Nigeria. Now, the fourth chapter deals with the um, fundamental rights. That is the rights that are most, much more important than any other right. Um, you alluded just recently to the um, protests we had recently, the NSAS movement or the end police brutality movement. And this is um, it, the part of the constitution that confer on us as citizens that right, that part of the constitution guarantee on us one of the fundamental rights, which is the right to peaceful assembly and expression that we saw recently. And some other rights that I encompass under that chapter include issues that will have to do with um, right to life, right to dignity of human person, private and family life, personal liberty, freedom of thought and conscience, religion, property, and all sort of rights, which um, we will discuss in detail in the course of the conversation. Um, now, if you look at the fifth chapter of the Constitution, I'm just trying to give us an overview, just to give us a general information of what the Constitution encompasses before we go into the detail. Now, that part, the part five or chapter five has to do with the um, legislative um, powers or the legislature as a body, which we have the National Assembly, of course, the, that, that has the Senate and the House of Rest. We have the um, State House of Assembly and all uh, their powers, function, qualifications. Um, as, as one of our rights as citizens, you can, we always know is our right to um, vote and be voted for. And uh, recently we have had an amendment that allow um, me or any of Nigerian citizen that is up to 25 years to aspire to represent his constituency in the state house or in the house of assembly of the state or the house of representative or anybody that ha that attained the age of um, 35 to aspire to, um, to go to the um, Senate or even the pre be the president of the Federal Republic. Now, um, chapter six has to do with the executive. That's where you have um, the qualifications or the requirement for anybody to, the, to be president of Nigeria and then the executive powers. You have the um, provision on who can be a governor of the state and the minimum requirement in terms of age and things like that. And then it also has provision that will have to do with um, our powers as citizens, of course, to remove those people from office in terms of um, we all are aware of the impeachment provision. And of course, we all know that the representative or the people who are occupying those seats at the national level, the National Assembly, are presumed to be our representative and they are on our power. So one of such powers we are giving a citizen that is exercised by our representative is the power to remove any other person or any of the executive, um, only person from the executive branch that we are not satisfied or that violate any of the laws or any of the rules. Now, um, chapter seven has to do with the judiciary, that's the 
courts and it listed the various courts from the courts at the federal level which um we have the appeals court as the supreme court we have the courts of appeal we have the sharia courts we have the federal high courts and all other courts that are listed under that particular part of the constitution and then um it has provision that will have to do with um courts that are uh, presumed to be the courts of the federal capital territory which we have the fct high court of course and then some other miscellaneous provisions under the same um, chapter. Now, um, we have, in addition to the chapters of the Constitution, um, what we call schedules in the Constitution. Now, um, we have about five schedules in the Constitution, which is, um, of course, if we will discuss them subsequently we, in the course of the conversation, we will have an elaborate conversation around that. We have the first schedule that lists um, the state of the federation and the FCT and their component, that's the um, local government. We have the second schedule, which deals with what lawyers will always tell you, the um, exclusive list or the concurrent list. Now, in the course of the conversation, we will tell you what the um, exclusive list entails and what the concurrent list entails. And maybe just to mention that um, the National Assembly at the national level um, exercise its powers um, of making laws under the concurrent list and the exclusive list. And uh, maybe we will discuss that in detail because there are a lot of analysis as to, okay, what um, even the state assembly can legislate under issues that will have to do with the concurrent list. So what happens if both the state assemblies and the national assembly legislate on such an issue? So we'll have um, scenarios that we'll be looking at in the course of the conversation. Now, um, the third schedule deals with the federal and the executive bodies, and then the FCT administration, their powers, their functions, and their responsibilities as provided under the Constitution. Now, um, um, you also have the fourth schedule, which deals with the functions of the local government councils and their responsibilities. Now, the last thing I will mention under the structure of the Constitution may be to look at the fifth schedule, which is um, things that has to do with um, oath taking. Um, when we all see or how we all see um, the elected officials, the, those things they do when somebody holds the Bible or the Quran to take an oath to say, I, Ada Musa, Adamu, or I, Femi, um, Ahmad, that all those sort of, 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 of process, they are provided for and guided by the Constitution on how they should be done. And these are requirements before any elected person can occupy a public office in Nigeria. Um, so, um, because the constitution is um, meant to regulate and govern us as a people, the people who make the constitution anticipate that there will be need for the constitution or for us to continue to improve the constitution as a document because they do not expect that the document will be perfect from the one. So um, they make provision in terms of process and procedure on how you can improve the constitution by way of amendment. And um, as at today, um, as we may be aware, the constitution has passed through about um, four alterations. And then um, maybe let me just highlight the alterations that the constitution has passed through as at today. We had the first alteration and the first alteration, the only thing it added to the Constitution, or one of the things it added to the Constitution was to provide for financial independence for the National Assembly and the Electoral Commission, that's um, Independent National Electoral Commission. So by way of improving the Constitution, the um, legislature, that the National Assembly has amended the Constitution that's the first time to provide for financial independence for the National Assembly and the um, Independent National Electoral Commission. Now, we had the second alteration of the Constitution, and um, during the second alteration, um, a provision was made for timeline for conduct of national election by the Independent National Electoral Commission. So as we are aware, just last week or two weeks ago, the um, Independent National Electoral Commission has released um, a timetable for the conduct of the 2023 election. So this is one of the functions that is, um, or one of the, responsibilities that is placed on that commission by the constitution by the second alteration of the constitution now the third alteration of the constitution established 
for us one of the courts we don't have which is one of the very important court that is created which is the national industrial court the court that deals with um things that will have to do with employment and labor related issues so before now we had just um sort of issues go to different courts and we had a lot of confusion so the drafter of the constitution anticipate that such issue will, will likely arise and they make provision for amendment and the third amendment take care of that now i will talk about the fourth alteration and that's where i will stop in terms of the overview maybe we begin to look at the detailed conversation subsequently now the fourth alteration is the alteration that introduced a couple of um things about five um uh, yeah about five items of course now um as as young nigerians um it was during the fourth alteration that we had the opportunity of um having the not too young from a bill passed if you remember just um for the 2019 election we had the um age or the minimum requirement in terms of age for contesting the office of the president to be the age of 35 and the senate to be also 35 the house of the representative and the state house of assembly to be 25 instead of um the 40 and then the 35 and um, 30 we had previously in the constitution oh. now yes before that was before the amendment now um it also make provision to cure a sort of um a defect or gap that was identified in the constitution we can always all of us maybe can remember what happened in koji state during the election before the last that's during the tenure of the current governor the first um day of the current governor when at the um, when the election was going on suddenly a candidate died and an issue came up as to okay what will be the solution to that so to cure such um such sort of defect um and then another thing that was identified by the drafters is the fact that we had governors who um were deputy governors and serving with their principal right and then the principals died and they had to complete the term of the principal and the constitution anticipate that you can only be a governor for a period of eight years and you have people serving for 12 years because they completed the tenure of the other people so the constitution the drafters now re amended the constitution to limit that to say okay if you are the deputy governor and the governor died when the tenure is still on even if it is just one year that is left if you serve for that one year as the governor you have completed the tenure of that other person as well as your first tenure so you can only contest once and be a governor for four years and then we also had amendment that has to do with pre-election matters i think we will discuss election and election matters and we'll yes, discuss we those in detail to what will limit the time for the pre-election matters and then finally, the last thing the Fourth Amendment brought to us, which is a very fundamental and important factor, is the financial autonomy for the state and the uh, legislature and the judiciary. We all know what the state houses of assembly has been passing in the um, uh, in the state, and we all know the sort of um, financial um, difficulty the judiciary has been passing. So, if our democracy is to get mature to that level we want it to be we thought that it is necessary for those two organs to be given some sort of independent or actually and that was why that was provided so what i did was just to give us a brief overview in terms of structure and arrangement of the constitution and then the provisions that were added to the constitution after the original one that was handed to us in 1999 so that's okay. what i tried to do we will go into the detail of the conversation <laughs> Now you all know why he is called Chairman Mao. <laughs> Maiwa, thank you so much. You've given us such a detailed rundown. Over the next four weeks, ladies and gentlemen, all of us who are signed in, who are logged on right now and watching, we are going to be discussing the different sections of the Constitution together. Chairman Mao has just given us the overview. For those who do not have the constitution already, if you look in the comment section right now, you would see a link. Different people, someone is posting the link again and again. Please click on the link so you can download the app, the constitution app for the Android devices. Uh, for iPhones and iOS devices, we're going to have to figure out a way to get your your link to you. We might also try and put in the comment section a pdf a link to a pdf document that you can you can download so please give us some virtual claps for chairman mao for giving us this 
wonderful run down of what to expect. Thank you so much. Nonso is here. Mozart, welcome. Thank you very much. The Constitution, much. we see, has a preamble. Like some books will have a foreword or an introduction. What is in the preamble? Everyone, sit tight, relax, and listen as Nonso shows us exactly what the preamble or talks to us about what to expect in the preamble. If you already have downloaded your copy, it's, it will be okay, like I have a copy of my constitution right here in front of me. It's okay to open your copy and look at it while he speaks so that it makes understanding better for all of us. Welcome, Nonto. Thank you very much, uh, Joyce, and good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the uh, platform. I'm taking a cue from where Muawiya stopped. I think uh, Muawiya mentioned something where he said that uh, the constitution is ours. If we rely on that statement that the condition is ours, we want to see what really made this constitution our document. And if we will agree that we want to call this constitution our constitution rather than the constitution, so that we really can own it uh, as we go ahead to unpack the sections, you will see that this preamble itself is not. Uh, named according to any section. It's not contained in chapter one, but it's just like the mission statement of the constitution, mission statement that some of us will have in our various businesses. So it's the document, it's the part of the constitution that gives the constitution a kind of living uh, power to make it a living document, like Mawia mentioned what lawyers call ground norm, to make it a living document and to enable us to uh, take ownership of the constitution. In the opening statement of the preamble, we can see that uh, it starts with a statement that say, we, the Nigerian people, I, I, I want to believe we are already in the unpacking segment of discussion now, haven't had an overview. So it, it, it opens with the statement, we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, critics have come to say, why start with this statement when uh, uh, conversations that were around making of the constitution did not really take into consideration uh, everybody, uh, rather, rather the persons were selected by the then legitimate government of the time uh, to come and form constituent assembly. Uh, that, that conversations can, uh, the, that conversation is arguable. But what it doesn't take away from us is that the constitution to the extent that is the living document is a document in force and is a supreme law of the land, like Maria mentioned. That preamble has um, given us the copy of that constitution to protect. Each one of us have that that have this constitution to, to protect. We we want to see, for the sake of history and given the events that are happening now, what were the historical antecedents that led to uh, drafting this preamble and including it in our constitution. And making it look as if we ourselves, uh, we the Nigerian people, actually drafted this constitution, um, because the members that went to sit in the constituent assembly acted in representative capacity on our behalf. While we are just mentioned that we citizens can exercise our rights uh, to remove um, the members that we've elected, but we we do so through the uh, through the members that we've elected to to, to, to represent us either at the National Assembly or the State Houses of Assembly. So in the same vein, the persons that were selected to make up this Constituent Assembly were taking that role on our behalf. What this goes to explain to us is that protecting the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is really a duty of everybody. It's not just a duty of those in government. It's also something that will go ahead to explain to us that we should not just see Constitution as something that gives us rights as citizens and uh, which is which we can see in mainly a chapter that causes fundamental human rights or the other section but the constitution itself is something that we as citizens own we have ownership to the constitution therefore we have every duty and obligations to protect the constitution not just because we want to defend our rights so the preamble to the 1999 uh, constitution before we continue was a lifting who Klein and Seka from the 1979 constitution because the antecedents to both constitutions were a little bit similar. On the one hand, we're coming from 
number of years of military rule, 13 on uh, on this side and seven, 16 on this, 17 on this other side, long years of military rule. And then, so the framers of the constitution drafted it in such a way that we want to make that resolution that we wouldn't want to go back uh, to those years of undemocratic government again. That is why it also goes ahead to, to provide that, that we, the Nigerian uh, people of Federal Republic of Nigeria, have not firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity and harmony and as one indissoluble and indivisible sovereign nation under God dedicated to promotion of inter-African solidarity, world peace and international cooperation and understanding. So we were given this rider to say we are, we are coming back from uh, quite a dark, a dark history, democratic-wise, governmental-wise, and we're making this resolution to make such progress in order not to go back there again. And then it continues, and to provide for a constitution for the purpose of promoting the good government and welfare of all persons in our country on the principle of freedom, equality, and justice, and for the purpose of consolidating the unity of our people, do hereby make and give to ourselves the following constitution. We see those operative, the, the, the last uh, comment, there, which actually ends the, 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 the preamble, is a short uh, provision. It's a document that we gave to ourselves. And it's, that is why it it's behoves on every one of us. It gives us the duty uh, uh, to, to protect it. Uh, it is said in, in pidgin English, if person don't know where rain from the bit time, you know, go know where, where the things stop. So we were coming from a past and we decided uh, to make that resolution to have a document that we regulate all we do. One can, we can ask ourselves, for instance, of what business is the constitution to the business I am running? Okay, um, the, the law requires really for you to, um, to after, some, after a certain time of operating your business, to have it registered. To register that, that business, the Corporate Affairs uh, Commission is, is, has the duty to review your, your, your documents and issue a certificate of, registr of registration. For the Corporate Affairs Commission to have that power, the power was conferred on it by the Company and Allies Matters Act, which was recently um, amended and has its own set of controversies. If time permits, we could delve into that a, a little bit. Now, for the for that uh, Company and Matters Act to, to, to become an effective law, the National uh, as Assembly had that constitutional power that Mawia mentioned in the OO overview to enact such laws uh, in terms of company and all other matters which belong to the exclusive list. And who now gives that, who now gives that uh, constitutional power to the uh, members of the National Assembly? The constitutional power is limited to members of National Assembly by the constitution. So we can now come now and see how every little thing we do can be related and traced back to the constitution. That is why it was very much important that it's a document that we gave to ourselves. And it's a, it's a document that we are all uh, um, enjoined to protect. And I can bet you one of the first ways for us to give such protection to the Constitution is by trying to understand it. Uh, that's why this platform will be very, very commendable, because what we don't understand, we really can't protect. So we are enjoined to really put every effort as the, the, the presentation continues in a number of uh, sessions, when we now unpack clear provisions of the constitution, pay good effort to understand the provision, not only because we want to use it to advance our right, but we want to understand it because it's our documents. We can, we can lie in wait and complain that when consulted as a people um, before the statement uh, was uh, crafted to mean that we the people drafted this constitution, but we cannot now sit back and haven't, haven't got a, a, a second chance in this talk show with Joyce Daniel, for instance, to understand the provision and then shy away. So protecting the constitution begins with we understanding the provision because by virtue of the preamble of constitution, we gave ourselves this constitution to be bound by it for, the, for this constitution to regulate us as a supreme law. I'll read the floor here. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm so excited also because there are things I'm actually hearing for the first time. So I have looked at the constitution before. I have downloaded it. I have 
looked at it but hearing someone speak for someone like me we we all learn in different ways i learn easier when someone is talking to me and explaining things to me and i'm looking at it oh is this is what it really means we really can't protect what we don't even understand so i'm i'm very grateful that you know pal Premier africa legal came on board to expatiate this and explain this to us and so thank you so much for taking us through the thank preamble you. so now we're diving or delving into the chapters themselves and i will welcome sarah uh earlier i had said to us that i will refer to her as the special somebody <laughs> here with us <laughs> let's go into the general provisions chapter one um why is this constitution so important what makes what gives it that power i'm sure in explaining the provisions we will begin to see why and how we must understand the constitution so we know our powers that are within our hands sarah over to you thank you thank you so much for having me here and i'm very delighted to you know talk about the constitution particularly because as a people we are yearning for change. I mean, we want to see things work. We want to see a better Nigeria, not just for ourselves, for our children, and for the future generation to come. And um, this is very important. Like Nonzo has, has rightly um, pointed out, how do we begin to, you know, you know, work towards the future when we don't even understand the law that we have? So I'm going to talk about, um, if you look at, sections one of the constitution it says that the constitution is supreme and the provisions are binding what does this mean it means that the constitution is the highest law of the land it constitution is the number one law it is the ground norm it is the fountain of law from which every other law derives it, its validity right so um, like like Nato has also rightly stated that when we go further in the course of this um, this series, we will learn that the constitution is just one law. It is the highest law. Now, the constitution also gives powers to the National Assembly, the State Houses of Assembly to make laws. It is important to note that those laws that they that our National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly are empowered to make must of necessity be in compliance with the provisions of the constitution right so when we say the constitution is supreme the constitution sets the pace for our institution the apparatus the scope of government the powers of the gov the, the the government and its agencies of the people and it just spans out right so here the constitution says that the uh, constitution is supreme and its provision is binding on all the, it has a binding force on all authorities and persons throughout the federal republic of nigeria it is also important to note at this point that even the president that is is the number one citizen of the country is bound by the provisions of the constitution and cannot in the exercise of its duties go outside you know, the parameters acceptable under the constitution. The constitution also provides for the governance in governing, in administration of laws and all, it must be done in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. The constitution also provides that, and then going, going forward, right, the constitution says that the National Assembly can make laws, state houses can make laws. Any law that our legislators can make that is inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution shall, to the extent of its inconsistency, be, be null and void. Now, I, I would just um, like to explain a bit on that. So the, the, we have legislators who can make laws. And where they make a law that is, you know, that is a particular section doesn't 
you know, is not in tandem with the provisions of the constitution. That law entirely is not void. The law is still valid, but to the extent that the law contravenes the provisions of the constitution, then that particular section is null and void. And so it is, it is important that we get that part. That part. Um, it also says here, if you look at um, sections two of the constitution, it says that Nigeria is indivisible and indissoluble. I mean, this also relates back to where we uh, when also talked about the preamble where he says, we the people, we the people of Nigeria have decided to be bound and we have decided to make these laws for ourselves. And then we are not, you know, it, it is not a question of we want to separate, we want to go our ways. We have this law. And then it is it is a very functional law. It is a law that has the force of law. It is a law that, you know, is not entirely bad. It is one that if we understand it, you know, it would help us or uh, to, to, to get us to that part that we want to get to. Right. Yes. So, so Sarah, please let, allow me let me just chip in something. Just before this, you made a statement about a law being void, but not... Let me ask you to just break it down for some of us who don't even know what the word void means. Oh, right. Uh, okay, so... Not fine. So help us break it down and perhaps use an example that we are able to relate to right. when you say the national assembly state assembly could you just go back to that point if you don't mind all right so if you look at sections one subsections three of the constitution it says that if any other law is inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution that law shall to the extent of its inconsistency be null and void. Now, remember, I started by saying that the Constitution is supreme. It is the number one law. Every other law derives validity, derives um, um, derives authenticity, right, from the Constitution. So if you make a law, if a State House of Assembly, for example, makes a law that um, has a provision that somewhat discriminates against um, say gender for instance right now under the constitution part of your fundamental right is that um, no no person shall be you know discriminated by virtue of his gender or religion or race or whatever so if there's a law for instance that is correct everything in the law is okay but then it it has a clause or a section or a paragraph that has a discriminatory element now what, so what it doesn't I mean, agree with it doesn't agree yes, it with it doesn't agree from. exactly yes. it is not it doesn't it doesn't correlate with the provision of the constitution now that section of the law shall as, as the section that doesn't agree with the provision of the constitution will be cancelled exactly Fantastic. will not right. hold. please yes. proceed yes. thank yes. you thank you all right so um and the constitution also goes ahead to talk about, um, first of all, we have said that we the people, right, and we operate a federal system of government such that, you know, powers are, are, are shared between the federal government, the state government, and the local government. And the federal government is like the central authority, the central power. So Nigeria operates that system, and then we have states, we have capitals, and under the constitution, we can see that Nigeria has 36 states, and each, each um, the headquarters of the government is the capital of that state. We also have local governments spanning, I think, 774 now, local government in Nigeria. And I know when we go forward in the course of this um, conversation, we'll get to know more on the powers of the government, you know, the different arms of government and how they operate and all of that. So I would just um, give it up at this time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Talking about the supremacy of the Constitution and the state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So what I understood is 
the states can provide their own laws the state's houses of assembly but their laws must be in sync with whatever exactly. the constitution is exactly exactly so no matter how nice it sounds in mm -hmm. your state if it is not in sync with this supreme law called the constitution mm -hmm. it's nonsense and ingredients exactly, <laughs> we, exactly. I, i'm just i'm just thinking out loud in fact let, let me bring back um chairman mao and mozart it, it, has there been any situation recently or anyone that you any anybody here remembers where there was such a law created by a state house of assembly perhaps but it was voided by the constitution is, is there any such law do we know any, of any such incidences any of us uh, well, uh, okay sir i want okay. to say something uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead sir. because the okay. one i can easily the one i can easily remember is still under contention in the, in the court of law and okay. by virtue of that we want to allow the courts to decide and take its court before we now go ahead and comment on them Yes, I think it has to do. Yes, yes. I know one that is currently in contention, which goes to show that uh, things like this, controversies like this, do exist. They do exist. Okay. Sarah, you were going to make a point. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. the point I was going to make is that um, the, the example that comes to mind is one that um, I think in the course of the conversation we will get to it. This doesn't really touch on the. Um, inconsistency of a law this is a situation where um the state you know you know we have said that we operate a federal system right each each uh each um or each tier has their role to play right so where the state house of assembly makes a law that it, it that is ordinarily within the jurisdiction of the national assembly to make a law so you have instances where um matter on a maritime law for instance is in the exclusive legislative list now there's a particular case that i was involved in one time in posture court and then um, the um i think aquaibom states had passed a law touching on maritime and then our argument was that you know what this is within this is not within the you know provision of the constitution the house of assembly cannot it is not within the legislative powers of the house of assembly so yes i know that okay. no one comes to mind as to inconsistency now but in the course of the series we will get to know. we will get there so yeah. something you said let me throw the question back to all of us maybe chairman mao will take it you said we operate a federal system all right many of us say nigeria is a federation but we don't know what a federal system means what is a federal system what is that federal system so um federalism as a system of government that we operate um is a system whereby power or functions and responsibility trickle among the different tiers of government now if you you if you um look at the constitution it provides or it created the federal government as an entity right it okay. provides the state government as an entity and then it went ahead to provide or to create um the local government mm -hmm. or what we call the area council in the fct now the essence of all of this is for us to be able to practice a pure federalism in such a way that powers of each of these arms of government are different and separately exercised. Now, there are certain sort of powers and functions that are only reserved for the federal government. And then there are certain sort of these powers that are reserved or to be carried out by the state government. And then there are certain of them that are to be or responsibility that are to be exercised by the local government. And the essence of all of this is just simple. The whole essence of government is for it to serve me and you as citizens. And the only way the government can be able to serve us or the only way we can be able to access those services is when the government is made accessible or get closer to the people. So the only way you can get the okay. government closer to the people is when you create those tiers of government. 
and the system okay. of practicing of taking the government closer to the people is the real or is the practice of what federalism federalism is all about so really is. The okay so government, I... yes okay let Go me ahead. leave it at Go that ahead. maybe that will be more complicated so the okay. federal so, government sir. has its responsibilities yes the federal government and has the federal government my, 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 yes, sorry. Go ahead. Exactly. And the state government has its responsibilities and then the local government has its own responsibilities. So that way, that's what is called the federal system, where each and every tier of the government mm -hmm. has its own player function and responsibilities to allow. For the part, I'm for, sure for, we're for, taught for, this thing in secondary school or primary school at some point, but mm -hmm. the truth is, up until I ask this question, I cannot even pretend I wasn't sure what the federal system really meant. So, do we really operate a federal system in everything we do or are there some parts of our national life that are federal and some that are not federal? Sarah, I like the way you're smiling, my special story. <laughs> and you're going to answer this one for me, please. Where are some areas where we are practicing true federalism and some areas where we are in want of federalism? Um, well, I can say that um, as far as policing is concerned, we are, <laughs> we are operating federalism because policing the armed forces is federal government, right? Okay. The areas that we I don't I don't I don't think any any comes to mind where we're not. Okay. I, I really don't think any comes to mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Let me let me. Let me, let me, let me Maria, go ahead, please. Okay, maybe let me come in a bit. Um, this is a very controversial issue when it comes to the Nigerian federal system. <laughs> Whether we are really practicing a pure federalism or not, which is a very um, controversial question that has been going on for a long time. Now, mm -hmm. um, despite the fact that we are a federal entity or a federal um, state that operates a federal system mm -hmm. of government, a lot and a lot of our powers and functions there is a feeling in the system which is of course genuine are uh, centralized basically now they are still, you take, for example, they are still done they are still, at no, they are still they are still they do not trickle down to the level of the other tiers so they are still being if i can use the word um hijack at the top <laughs> so okay. that to simplify it right so okay. uh, let me use like example one for this let me use the example police. of police. Okay. Um, okay. Compare the federal system of government in Nigeria and where we brought it, maybe in the United States. Okay. Um, in the United States, policing, as we all know, is a local affair. Policing has nothing okay. to do with the central government. Maybe let me use okay. the word central government so that we can understand. So if you look at the higher the structure of our police force, the whole structure, the whole structure of control and command of the police force structure in Nigeria is controlled from the central government. The state government has very little or no control in the structure of the police and its function. So that is a feeling, that is an area where people feel the federalism that we ought to have been practicing have not been practiced in real sense. So right. this is why we are now seriously asking for state policing. For state policing, exactly. So that's where we will so get to the real this question. Non so yes. if we are asking for state policing now, I'm just taking this on. We're going to yes. continue with the understanding of the constitution. constitution. Yes. Does it mean that the constitution already does not provide for state policing? Or the we are just not adhering to the constitution. No, the constitution, uh, as far as it's an organic document, has not contemplated, has not made clear provisions for us to have uh, state policing. It's a clamor that is already ongoing uh, to okay. see whether we can make some alterations that will enable us to have uh, state policing. There may be pockets of provision here and there where there are some responsibilities of. Uh, security. So some states are arguing that they can hide under the responsibility given to the chief executive of the states uh, to maintain public order, to maintain security of the states. 
uh, whether that would also be a, an enabling uh, provision to enable uh, him have the state police. Um, but that has not. Him or her. The, yes, yes. But that has not uh, been expressly uh, provided in the constitution. Okay, it has not been expressly provided. So, just before we go to the next part of the constitution to continue, let me let me ask one last question. When you say alterations to the constitution. As, is that the same thing as amendment or is that something different when we hear constitution amendment okay or not, so, not so please go ahead yes okay yes um i would say in a layman's language is a small amendment amendment is is in, in some way that it just takes sections mm -hmm. takes bits of provisions to amend maybe explaining it a little bit for more or expanding and adding more provisions, or maybe uh, uh, um, changing the weddings of certain provisions. And uh, amendment will contemplate a complete, a larger form of uh, review of the constitution, really, if we want to amend. That's why the constitution, the draftsmen are carefully using alteration. Because remember that the, the constitutional uh, democracy that we operate on is a rigid one. It's not a very easy, uh, yeah. Yes, it's not very easy to, it's a rich concern, so it's not very easy to change it, if I may use the layman's language. Okay. Therefore, so yeah. that bit, bit is encouraged to make okay. uh, introductions that were necessary. Okay, so Sarah, please tell me, or tell us. I'm, I'm understanding the answer in my head. I want to be sure I'm clear. Between, mm -hmm. I'm still on this issue of alteration and an amendment. Okay. How easy is it to have alterations made? Yeah, is it much easier than amendments? Um, it is not much easier. It is. Okay. It is not easy. Okay. Let me leave it at this. It's not easy. Although it is, it is much more difficult to amend. Okay, so in this is this is just part one. I'm sure in about part three or part four, we will be talking more about mm -hmm. the amendments because exactly. we will now know exactly how to get it done. Because we all have been hearing constitution amendment, constitution amendment. There's so many things that need to be amended, which we are now hearing is the bigger deal than an alteration. So we we will even know if we want to ask for some alterations and then some amendments. But for now, for today, we are following the progression of the Constitution. We have talked about the preamble and we have talked about a bit of Chapter 1. Let's now talk about the legislative powers. Chairman Mao, please talk to us about legislative powers. Mawia, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I said over okay, to you. To talk to us, please, about legislative powers as we continue in the progression of the constitution. Okay. Um. Thank you, Joyce. Um. The yes. beauty of this our conversation, to some extent, is some of these things are interconnected, and um, that's maybe is just taking it up from where um Sarah um stopped. Um, Sarah may mention, Sarah make mention of the fact that um, the constitution, the provision of the constitution is binding on all authority and persons throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, um, the constitution has provided for three tiers of government and then um, with each of the tiers having clear powers, functions, responsibilities and duties. Now, one of the tiers or one of the organs of government that is created in, instead of tiers, the organ, I think, is the appropriate one. Um, one of the organs of government created by the constitution is the legislature. And the primary function of the legislature under the constitution 
is to make law for peace, order, and good, and good governance in the, um, in, in the country. Now, um, if you look at the provision of section four of the constitution, it provided for um, both the National Assembly and the Central Assembly. And I think let us break it down this way. Now, we have the National Assembly, which make up of the Senate and the House of Representatives, that's the House of Reps. And the powers and function of the National Assembly in Cuba, that's the House of Reps and the um, Senate, is to make law for the Federation, of course, is to make law for the Federation. Now, the State House of Assembly has powers of making law for the state. Now, we also have the bylaws that are made by the local government or the area council. Now, the constitution anticipates that there is need for us to have clearly each of these um, organs of the legislature having clear powers and function. Now, the National Assembly, that is the House of Reps and the Senate, has the power or were conferred power to make law for items. If you remember during the overview, I make mention of the concurrent and the legislative list. Now, the National Assembly is conferred with powers to make law for items listed under the exclusive list alone to the exclusion of all other arms of government. No other arm of government can make laws for items listed under the um, none of the other um, chambers of the national of, of, of the uh, legislature can make law for items listed under the exclusive legislative list other than the National Assembly, that is the Senate and the House of Reps. Now, um, maybe let me just mention some of these items that are provided in the Constitution. We have things that will have to do with aviation. We have things that will have to do with census. Maybe if they say they want to count Nigerians or if there is need to make law on how census should be conducted or establishment of even the, um, the National Census Commission and all those things, it is only the National Assembly that can make law on such an item. That's either the Senate or the House of Reps. Now we have issues that will have to do with citizenship. When is a person said to be a Nigerian? What are the requirements for you to be have to, or to you to have a right to call yourself a Nigerian? All these are issues that only the National Assembly can make laws on. And then when issues that will have to do with maybe diplomatic relations, the relationship between Nigeria and the United Kingdom, the relationship between Nigeria and our um, broader African countries, all these things is are exclusively meant for the National Assembly alone to make alone to make law on none of the other um, uh, this thing can the State House of Assembly, let me be specific, cannot make law on such an item. Issues that will have to do with drugs and poisons, when is some a sort of a drug says to be pre prohibited and all sorts of things like that, it is only the National Assembly that can make law. So I think I have listed a couple of items. There are so, so many of them. I think we have a total of 68 items that are reserved for the National Assembly alone to make law on. Now, for the second list, that's the concurrent list under part two of the Constitution, that is open to both the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly to make law on. So under such items, we have issues that will have to do maybe with, um, let's say, um, generation or transmission of um, electricity. Um, of course, we all know the power scarcity we have. So if you want to increase our um, generation or transmission, both the State of Assembly and the National Assembly have the power to make law with respect to, to such um, issues. And then um, things that will have to do with regulation or right of person or authority to maybe um, to authorization for dam or um, interference with flow of water from sources. Now, this is an area I will want to make an emphasis. Um, under the concurrent list, since both the State Houses of Assembly and the National Assembly have powers to make law, now the questions will be, the question will be, what happened to a situation where both the State House of Assembly and the National Assembly make 
the law under an item under the concurrent legislative list. Now, we have what is called under the law a doctrine of covering the field. And let me say, try and explain what it means. Under the doctrine, once the federal legislature, in this case, the National Assembly, make a law on an item under the concurrent legislative list, get me, once the National Assembly does the central legislation, make a law under an or for an item under the concurrent legis uh, legislative list, the State House of Assembly cannot make law irrespective of the same item. And if there is any law that is made by the State of Assembly on the same item, the law made by the National Assembly will prevail. Um, Sarah alluded to that. Yes. Let me hear you on that. It's my head. I'm sure I'm not speaking only for myself. We can see comments in the comment section. People want to ask questions. That's our heads. Wait, wait. Our heads, oh, question. Yes. Why do we have National Assembly and State Assembly? What really, in fact, let me bring okay. everybody back. What is the sense? I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, from the constitution and i'm looking at it as you are speaking i'm wondering is it because we are trying to practice federalism or does it also look to me like we are just repeating functions please anybody speak to us okay um maybe let me check the first attempt and then any of the other um, panelists can uh, discuss that um, yes, after you know, SM will speak actually, and then please, Sarah will say something. Okay, the, the essence is not really perfect. Um, you know, laws, rules, and regulation are peculiar things to each and every set of people and individuals. Um, okay. The sort of challenges or problems or issues or needs in, let's say, Sokoto State or in Kasuna State may not be the same with the sort of issues or problem that are that the Tarabians may need. So okay. issues or challenges mm -hmm. are peculiar to each and every set of people, right? Okay. So for okay. us to be able to handle or to be able to take care of peculiar challenges or needs of each of the local environment, that's why the drafted of the constitution anticipated that there is need for you to give the people representing this sort of people the powers to make laws that are peculiar to their local environment. Okay. Right. So if laws you say it is only the National Assembly that should make laws, exactly, that should make laws that should govern people of Ebony State or people of Enugu State, or so they may not understand the peculiar need or the situation and circumstances of the people of that locality. But, 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 we have senators and members of the House of Representatives from those constituencies let's what let's hear what non so has to say about this please yes it flows from the federal system of governments that we operate so remember the question you asked about what do we really understand by this federal system of government federalism, federal yes federalism which is that which which is a government where we try to uh, govern the people with uh, is fed with the federal with, with, the, with the government at the center and another government are the federal units, in this case, the states. So if you have a government at the center, the legislative, the lawmaking arm of government at the center is the National uh, Assembly. Now coming to the state, the lawmaking body of the state is the State House of Assembly. So by virtue of structure, that is the reason why we need to have the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly. And so, remember also where continue, continue. Of the preamble <laughs> that we copied this constitution from somewhere, and I will say that on a shame. Yeah. Uh -huh. We copied we copy, copy somewhere. We copied it, and it's a good copy because because if you look at when we, when we moved away from the Westminster style of government uh, in 1963 to the presidential and federal system of government from the uh, America, we looked at ourselves and felt that given the diversity that we have in, in Nigeria, the federal system of government, which operates in a country like the United States of America, with somewhat peculiar diversity as ours, will work for us. 
Okay. And I can say, yes, and I can say we, we all can attest to the fact that the American constitution has served them for centuries. And we, we are trying to believe that ours will serve us. It, it, it may not have really trickled down to meet our our aspirations yet. And uh, maybe there will be need to adjust a little bit to, 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 to meet any, but it is clearly um a, a point that, that Mawia made that there are some matters that the Imo State Task Force and would like to legislate uh, to be closer to the to the people that will not really be available for the okay. government at the center okay. to center. yes and to make this thing easy the constitution itself created a list of those matters that national assembly can legislate on the state of assembly can legislate on and then local governments can also pass bylaws on some other uh, matters like Maria explained okay okay sarah what do you think about this now let's be practical in terms of funding in terms of overlapping or uh, overlapping responsibilities in terms of practicality in your opinion i'm not asking what is right or wrong i'm just asking mm -hmm. your opinion do you think we really need a national assembly and a state assembly um in my opinion i do not think so i mean yeah. if you if you take into consideration the funding i mean this these guys don't end in small naira's and it is taxpayers money it is it is too much it's our money our yeah. money i mean we don't we don't we don't yeah. need it i mean it is okay we that we have it. a senate they can function as national assembly we have house of assembly yeah. i mean if we say we want people breath. closer to the um grassroots close, closer to the people we have the state houses of assembly and they make laws and i mean i really don't i really don't think that it is um it is a necessity um, yes it is a necessity to have them okay so one of the agitations going on I, i'm asking these questions and I'm, I'm sure i'm speaking the minds of the people we are not here on this program to make any demands or to make any suggestions no we are only here to understand the constitution that's why we're taking time to read so for everybody who is watching right now we implore you download the constitution the copy of the constitution if you haven't already so that you can also read through it as we are going through the different sections the chapters and we can understand it and make our own clear interpretations there is the interpretation of the law and there's also our opinions so that when we are making demands for either alterations or amendments or like somebody said to me today a brand new constitution altogether we will know exactly what we are asking for so maria we're going to let you continue talking to us about the legislative powers please myself sarah and nonso will leave the floor back for you okay so i was um mentioning the doctrine of covering the field just before we all came back to the platform um I mentioned that once the central legislature, the National Assembly, make a law on an item under the concurrent legislative list, don't forget I mentioned earlier that both of them has the powers concurrently to make laws on that the items. Now, if the National Assembly make a law on that the concurrent legislative list, and the State House of Assembly make a law on the same thing, now the law made by the National Assembly will prevail. And the law made by the State of Assembly will now be a non-existing law, will now be taken to have been covered by the law made by the National Assembly. And um, the drafters of the Constitution, of course, anticipate that there may be such clashes. That's why they make such provision. Now, um, currently, as at today, we have an issue that is actually at the um, National Assembly or the, an issue that is already at the... Um, hitting the polity in the media the national assembly introduced a bill that they want to pass into law that want to regulate the usage of water basically drilling of boreholes and all sort of things like that now if you remember um issues that will have to do with water and authority to 
to for dams interference with the flow of water from source or things like that in any further part of the federation is an item under the concurrent legislative list now the feeling of the of some of the states is that it is an attempt to um take away some of the rights or some of the things the ordinary will have provided for their people now specifically i can mention that the binua state as a government or as a state is really agitated by that law or by that proposal they are feeling such things should be left to their local um, state house of assembly is not a thing that should be um, legislated at the central level and um, you alluded just a while ago to the fact that okay if we have people from our local level representing our national assembly why do we need um, to have or to duplicate such powers um, maybe an answer to this may be because once the um, central um, legislation legislated on an item it becomes a law that every part of the federation every part of the country will be bound up on now if for example it is an issue that is only peculiar or that is an issue that does not in any way relate to people in the um, zamfara state or is an issue that does not relate to people in aqua Ibom state there is no need for us to allow the central legislature to make a law on such an issue it is better and safer for you to leave it to the state house of assembly to make a law on such an issue so that it is only the state house or it's only the state that will be bound by that law but the moment the central legislature made a law on it every other part of the federation will be bound by it and if it is not an issue that borders the state then or that borders that local level it becomes like just making a law on a thing that the people doesn't really need so maybe that's just by way of answering that now we have the residual list that's a list that is not even um provided for or that is not provided for in either the exclusive list or the concurrent list and that's presumed that these are areas where the um, local government can make law on so the constitution try as much as possible to give each of the arms of or each of the um different legislative houses it's clear responsibility so that there cannot be clashes or there cannot be issues in terms of exercise of those powers and responsibilities so maybe um i will leave it at that if there are questions maybe we can still discuss that aspect further fantastic for now we would leave it at that why I want us Nigerians to take responsibility. We are reading through, I'm looking at, I'm looking at my constitution right here and we're reading through and we're following through and looking at what you are saying, trying to understand. This is my personal recommendation to everyone who is watching. Create your own study groups. Yes, or your own WhatsApp groups. You belong to so many WhatsApp groups, your old students association, your family groups, and discuss these points let us take ownership we can no longer say they didn't teach us now we have it here study it for yourself go back read through well enough before the end of the session we will tell you how you can reach us so that if you have questions that will not be able to be entertained at this time you can engage but more than asking the questions on the platform we would want you to commit to studying even more follow the section seven subsection i'm seeing seven a b let me not go and say subsection or i am looking at so so if i while we're on this maria before i, I let you go out and, and call sarah to talk to us about the executive powers please i'm looking at the part two powers of the federal republic right and i'm seeing four and i'm seeing one and i'm seeing two three four then i'm seeing a so please tell us what's the section what is the subsection what's the uh -huh, you know so that we, when we're saying it too we sound intelligent you know what i'm saying i get you i get you okay so let's um use um section five for example that's the yeah. executive power if everybody is looking at his constitution now you will see the five is bolded is looking darker than any order of the provision right okay that's the section itself 
so, so if you hear me so section five. five right so that's the section itself now you will see one in bracket right and then it provides subject to the provision of this constitution the executive powers of the federation can anybody everybody see that now that subject to the that provisions of this constitution the executive powers of the federation yes i can exactly. see that that's that one part that is put in bracket is subsection one so if so you hear me say section five, five, section five, five section one section one then i'm referring to okay. that one in bracket now you will see just immediately under the one you will see a in bracket shall be vested in the president and may you can see that right that yes a in bracket is what we call paragraph a so if you hear me say section one subsection one paragraph a i'm referring to that particular chain in bracket so oh, you will my. go down to see that it is arranged most of the time in that order up to maybe most likely the end of the constitution thank you very much everyone please appreciate Mawia has taken us through understanding the legislative powers. What can the National Assembly do? But there was something that was not clear to me, please, before we let you go. Just please clarify. The Senate and the House of Reps. Who is not allowed to do what? Who does what? You may, you, you mentioned it, but I... It was fast for me. Okay. Tell me um, tell in, terms of, in terms of lawmaking powers, hmm, the hmm. two chambers... Does the House of Reps and the Senate has the same powers to make law on items under the exclusive list and order the concurrent legislative list? Concurrent. The only thing that happens uh, most of the time is what we call the concurrence of the two houses. So if the Senate passed a law and then the um, the House of Reps did not pass a law on that, there is a process within the National Assembly where such a bill is passed to the other house for it for them to pass it. As a concurrence act before it is sent to the president for assent. However, however, there are aspects of the constitution, powers that are preserved only, only for the Senate. I will give you an example. The mm -hmm. power to confirm a nominee of the president, maybe let's say the chief judge of the federation, it is a power that is for the Senate and not the House of Reps. The House of Reps cannot exercise some of this power. Now, okay. the power, right, to confirm appointees, again, of the president beside the um, chief judge, there are certain sort of people that are appointed by the president, as we are aware. Those powers are exclusively exercised by the um, Senate and Senate. not the House of Reps. But in terms of lawmaking power on item order, the concurrent and the exclusive legislative list, exclusive. both of them have the same power to make laws on those items. Wait, so please help me understand this. Yeah. That the reason we have the Senate and the House of Reps, let me bring everybody back. <laughs> I got I to gotta bring the gang back. The reason we have the Senate and the House of Reps Am I hearing that it's exactly the same thing, except to confirm appointees, or have I totally missed something? Okay, um, I will allow myself to get the second part. Yes. Uh, I like the way he laughed. Let me finish. It's also another controversy. Um, ah. Given the powers and function of the two um, chambers, right, there are a lot and a lot of Nigerians that think, and in fact, not only Nigerian, even in the United States where we brought it, there are some sort of them that think the duplication of the two houses is unnecessary. A lot and a lot of people, and it can be genuine. There are people that think maybe it is necessary you need it, but maybe as, as it will be a thing of a view now, it is not a thing of, of what is right. Um, there are people that will tell you that you need the two houses and they can give their justification. And there are people that will okay. tell you that you don't need the two houses and they will give you their justification. So maybe I will allow Nonso to dwell into that in detail. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you, Nonso. Sarah right. is also going to say something after you, Nonso. 
Yes, okay. So remember also where we are coming from. We are, we are, we are, we are looking at spread. We are looking at representation. We are looking at the system of government we are operating. We are looking at the peculiar dynamics that we have. So the argument may go for those who want to do it. And by the way, it's what we call bicameral legislature. Bicameral in the sense that there is there are two houses that, uh, like my way I explained, at the center. If it is one house, it's called a unicameral legislature. Uni for one, by for two. Okay, so... Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Are there <laughs> countries that practice unicameral legislature? Of course, there are. There are. There are. Fantastic. Continue. Continue. Yes. Okay, yes. wait. Oh, can you? Is it possible by any chance? Can you remember any such country right now? If you don't remember, that's fine. But maybe in the comment section, we'll see. Um, can you think of any country? Yes, I think. Uh, well, I think countries like uh, New Zealand. Yes, Canada, New Zealand. These countries are countries that practice unicameral legislation. Yes. Continue, continue. Yeah, tell us. Remember, also, remember also, I said we were trying to learn this federal system from a country called from somewhere United America. From uh -huh. So, because of that, uh, I could say because they still have that bicameral legislation and it works for them to some extent. Um, even when the uh, the the controversy and the the, the argument is 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 brewing both. In our country and, and their country but another aspect that it may be important to retain um both houses is to give opportunity of review we'll see that a little bit when we come to the judicial powers in terms of the courts it will be important for something to happen at a level and to give the, another person opportunity to look at it just in case there are things that other person could not see you know, so that concurrence is not just for them to actually for real legislative work, not just just for them to follow, follow I approve, I approve. If you want to concur, you also want to give opportunity to check. If for, for instance, in a place like in a place like America, a president will be impeached by the house and the Senate will, will not confirm that impeachment. You see, if you had that in the legislation, it could have been that a uh, little bit quick for one to be able to raise up a, a allegations of of, of 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 impeachment and go ahead and, and effect it without giving an opportunity for another person to review uh, the, the opportunity right. to you. give a second look is also as fundamental as opportunity to even see it in the first place it may be sound a little bit uh, uh esoteric and i don't want to be, be biased i want to say for the two reasons of a wider spread of representation for the opportunity of a second view let us retain our bicamera we are on. not asking your opinion on so <laughs> <laughs> of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Will the people, now that we are understanding the constitution, we yes. are going to start asking for some adjustments, amendments, and possibly a whole rewriting of the whole law because okay. we are now becoming aware. Sarah, okay. what's your thoughts about this? Um, well, I mean, uh, right now it will just be um, an academic discourse. You know, we have we have said it from the beginning that the constitution is supreme and it has provided for these legislative houses. I mean, until there's a repeal or until there's a, a restructuring or something, it is it is what it it's is. There. And we, what it is. We have Thank it. you. Yes. So just again to add to you know what Nonsu said. I mean, if you want to argue for and against if you want to argue against now now the review we're talking about when laws are made i mean until it is dispute until it is in dispute that is when the courts um, make a judicial pronouncement on it right so if we, if we don't get to that point the the president also signs uh, the president also you know assents to the bill so that the issue of review if, if 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 we have one house for instance and a, a bill is passed the president would also look at it i mean since he's ultimately going to you know ascend to give force to that look to that bill and then make it an act for instance you know it, it the president also would review and then the court will review so if i mean this, this argument is against having to to um having the bicameral system that Nelson has, has said. I mean, if you're talking about review 
ultimately it is the court that would interpret these laws and then it is not one house interpreting and another house you know reviewing i mean that's that's what i'm trying to thank you but because we are not debating yet today because we are not debating we're going to proceed our time is so far spent so we're going to have to quickly run through the, the the rest of the items that we need to discuss today we want to talk about the executive powers what powers does the executive have it's written right there hold on hold on in wait so just hold on part two says powers of the federal republic section five and we're going into subsection one hey, 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 hey. i'm feeling like <laughs> yeah, all right everybody please join us on part two section five subsection one all right sarah please talk to us about the executive powers while the rest of us you know leave the stage for you so much so right um Right. So, um, like we, we like we said from when we began, the Constitution. If you look, if you look at it and if you read through it, you find that every section is interconnected. Every provision is connected to another one. So you cannot pick one. You can't read the Constitution in isolation. You cannot pick one and leave. Like Mawia has just given us a an overview of the legislative powers, they make laws. After they make after they, they pass these bills, the president would have to assent to that bill, have to append his signature, and then it will assume the force of law. Until then, it is just a bill. So the primary function of the executive arm of government is the enforcement and implementation of the law. Now we, we have already established that we operate a federal system. We're going to look at um, the executive arm of government as it relates to the federation and the states. As it relates to the federation, the president is, you know, executive powers are vested in the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And then he can act either by himself or through his vice or through his ministers or through agencies or subject of course the provisions of this constitution and any other law that um, the national assembly has the power to make right so the powers of the president again again extends to um um making executive orders like we saw during the um covid 19 pandemic that hit even though he didn't make it himself the minister for health i think under under one of these um disease con this um, disease control acts now i can't i can't remember them correctly now so the president primarily is the person vested with executive powers of the federation and then this the power the powers of the of the president also extends to the maintenance of laws right i'm just going to look at if you look at sections five sub one paragraphs b now it says the powers of the president shall extend to the execution and maintenance of this constitution all laws made by the national assembly and to all matters to which the national assembly has for the time being power to make law so every law every bill that the national assembly passes the president primarily has the right to enforce those laws for the state house of assembly for the state right the executive powers vested in the governor and then he can act through his his um deputy and through um, ministries. This also extends to laws that are made by the um, state houses of assembly, right? 
And if, if you also go down to um, um, sections five now, sub four, it says notwithstanding, if you look at sections, sorry, if you look at sections five, sub three, so the executive power is vested in a state under subsection two of this section shall be so exercised as not to impede or prejudice the exercise of the executive powers of the Federation. I mean, this also goes to show that each arm of government, each tier of government has, you know, certain powers that, um, certain powers within their rights. And in the exercise of the governor's power, for instance, he will not do anything that will impede or, you know, contravene or, you know, tamper with the rights vested in the president. So when we talk about police, for instance, policing in Nigeria, it is a federal structure. It is a federal arrangement. So until a law is passed for, the, for us to have state policing, the state cannot interfere. The governor of the state cannot, cannot interfere in policing without the approval or consent or you know something of the federal government so i mean for want of time and um for basically basically the executive powers are to enforce and implement laws made by the legislators and you know legislators make the laws like we're going to hear now so talk um, now about the judicial system, the Power. judiciary would interpret the law, the executive would implement. Part of implementing okay. the laws, a part of, um, sorry, sorry, let me just add this. Executive powers of the federation, of the federal, of the president mm -hmm. now is in signing international treaties like we're going to see going further now that international treaties do not necessarily operate in Nigeria, except it is domesticated into our laws. And then that is also within the ambit of the federal government. We're also going to see that in the course of the conversation. I see yeah. that by week three or week four, we'll be talking about the legislature, the executive. So we're going to mm -hmm. piece it yeah. 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 Right now, we're just talking about general yeah. provisions, mm -hmm. right? So I, I'm, I'm finally understanding. So the first chapter in the Constitution is just saying general provision. Okay. Then okay. after that, we start going into the specific details. It just it uh -huh. still gives us an overview. Wow. I have finally began to understand. <laughs> Everybody who is here, please clap for yourself. Everybody who has taken time out to educate, please let's clap for the populace of the Nigeria. Oh my gosh, we need to clap for ourselves. <laughs> finally, we can open our two eyes and come together to study the supreme law that binds us all. It is foolishness not to know that supreme law that binds us. In fact, I dare say, going forward, one of the things that we're going to ask for in educational reforms is that this thing must be taught from kindergarten. Mm -hmm. As we are learning ABC, we should learn the laws that guide us so we understand. Oh, guys, thank you, pal. Thank you, Premier Africa Legal. Thank you for partnering with me on this to enlighten us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sure other people are going to be inviting you to come on their different programs to talk more about the Constitution because this is an ongoing conversation. We need the enlightenment. At some point, we're going to ask you to come and join us to some maybe some rural areas to go and sit down and use pidgin english maybe we'll go and bring this thing down 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 i heard somebody say in one of the groups on whatsapp where we advertise the program that um they are working to ensure the trans the, the the constitution is translated into local dialect you mean all these years we don't have the constitution in local dialects nigerian local dialects or local nigerian dialects anyway thank god mm -hmm. so non so i brought everybody yeah. back because yes yeah. I wanted to ask a few questions, but for time's sake, I, I will leave the questions off. I think I think it's quite clear. The constitution is right here, and we are following yes. through. So you uh, you'll be speaking to us about the judicial powers. The rest of us will go backstage for now. Thank you very much, Joyce. 
the judiciary uh, a third arm of government by no means the least because the fact that it's a third arm we are always tempted to see it as the least arm of government and um, the saying goes the last but not the least but the basic thing we need to understand here is that the legislature makes the law the executive uh, executes them implements them and the judiciary is called upon to interpret uh, these laws. It's that power to interpret the law like we started from the beginning of the conversation is given to it by the Constitution. That we have one or two grievances today, uh, our rights has been trampled upon, it's likely to be trampled upon and we we'll, we'll rush to court and the court opens the arm to hear us and make others. It's because the Constitution has given the uh, courts the power to exercise such judicial powers. And for the federation, the, the power is exercised by the courts, like the court that we can may like call as the federal courts. And those courts are um, sort of listed uh, in the constitution. For the judicial powers of the states, they are also vested in the courts, uh, which the, the constitution also lists. Now, the important thing about this judicial pass is that it now brings us to the third alteration that Muawiya mentioned, one of the alterations that we made to our constitution, the third one that we've made affected provisions of this uh, section uh, six as well, by enabling the national industrial cost to be listed because um, we just learned a lesson uh, beautifully well by Joyce that is the board we have the section, the subsection and the paragraph. So in section six, subsection five, Paragraph CC, we have the National Industrial Court listed as a court under the Constitution, giving it that status as a superior court of record. Okay, so the this same section gives this court inherent jurisdiction. Okay, and one may now ask, what about those courts that are not listed in the Constitution? Because if we look at this uh, provisions of Section 5, we may not see where it mentions the magistrate court, where most of our police bail matters go to, most of our police criminal matters go to at the first instance. Uh, we may not also have listed the customary courts, you know, the Akali courts. But if we, the same section allows the National Assembly or any House of Assembly of a state to make laws, so nothing in this, in the, in this provision precludes either of these legislative bodies to establish other courts eh, as the need may arise and as the uh, and as it falls within their uh, le their legislative powers so this section also gives the court inherent jurisdiction all courts of the land have that inherent jurisdiction that stems from this section six that the court has that inherent jurisdiction to do or to interpret the law starting from the constitution. Uh, you see a, a lot of, um, when, when we lawyers want to put applications before the courts, we, we want to cite provisions that we are relying on to have access to the court. One of those key provisions, the key provisions, uh, one of the key provisions that enables the, the gates of the court to be opened to you and I, the common man, as our last hope, is this said section C. So this said section C has opened the door. What it means really now is that you really don't need so much for you to get access to the courts because this same constitution, which we have now claimed as our own since we gave it to ourselves, has already opened the doors uh, to the courts to all of us by virtue of this said section six. So it gives the court the powers to, to interpret the, the, the law that the legislature um, has enacted and the executive is trying to execute. So we, the constitution made mention of court like the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land and is the court of uh, final recourse. His decision is final to the extent of the matters that are brought before the courts. And uh, from the Supreme Court, appeals go to nowhere. Some people will practice that from there you can appeal to God. 
And before you come to, before you assess the Supreme Court, you must have at least approached the Court of Appeal if you by way of appeal. But there are also matters which the Supreme Court can entertain on its own original jurisdiction. And eh? like those matters between two states or matters between federal government and the states. The concern also mentions the federal high court, which has its own jurisdiction. We'll see it later in the course of the conversation that were spelled out by the same constitution. And of course, it mentions the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. It mentions the High Court of States. It also mentions, by virtue of the third alteration, the National Industrial Court. It mentions the Sharia Court of Appeal of the Federal Capital Territory and the, uh, the Sharia Court of Appeal of various states. It mentions the Customary Court of Appeal of the Federal Capital Territory and the Customary Court of Appeal of other states. Then he mentions such other court as may be authorized by law to exercise jurisdiction. Where, where exactly are you reading right now? Where, where are we? I am reading Paragraph section what? six, subsection five. It has uh, about subsection five. I'm I'm there yes, now. Paragraph four. Yes, yes. I've, Paragraph I've, I tell you about Paragraph four. Yes, A provides for the Supreme Court. B provides for the Court of Appeal. C provides for the Federal High Court. C C. Because it's an alteration, remember, provides for the National Industrial Court. Yes. Yeah. Uh, D provides for the uh, High Court of Federal Capital Territory. Y E provides for the High Court of Estates. Y yeah. F provides for the Sharia Court of the Federal Capital Territory. G provides for the Sharia Court of Estates. Because know that some states, right, yeah. northern part of Nigeria, uh, operates the Sharia system. Yes. Yeah. Your adjudicator. Then, the two, the next two uh, paragraphs, H and G, provides for the customary court of appeal of federal capital territory and the customary court of appeal of the states. You see, federal capital territory is, is one of those special uh, entity that has the privilege of having both uh, the Sharia court of appeal and the customary court of appeal. YJ now allows for such other courts that may be authorized uh, by law to exercise jurisdiction on matters where the National Assembly can uh, make laws, then K, the last provision, repeats the same thing. You see, the, the Constitution, once we were able to look at the, the structure of the Constitution, we see that a clear thing that any sort of powers, because of the federal system of government that it gives to the federal government, it also tries to give to the state government. It's almost a simple school to understand, to understand the many provisions of the Constitution. Whatever it gives to the federal government, it like duplicates it. To repeat to say for the state's uh, government, you can exercise what because we operate a federal system. And ultimately, this section C, like I said, has opened the doors of the court to you and I, the common man. So let in, in yeah. this part we have a lot of restraints for having access to the court. See people dying and suffering. And he said, why haven't you express your grievance to court? Say, hey, court, I don't want court matters. No, the court is open to you to have access to everybody. By virtue of the constitution. And the court, by virtue yeah. of the preamble of constitution that we started from, we open this court for ourselves. It is we that said we want courts. Whenever we have need to settle dispute to interpret uh, uh, the laws that legislature has made. So the section gives okay. this inherent jurisdiction and the doors of the court have been opened for you and I, the common man. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nan. So I have brought Sarah back. I'm just watching the time go. There's so much to be said, but we have to be mindful of time. We have about I, I would want us to wrap up in another 10 minutes. Many people did not expect to be here for almost two hours. And thankfully, there this video is on is, is going to be right here on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram for everybody who's watching on a different platform so that we can come back to the video again and again, even with the constitution right now in your own device. On your device, you can print it out. Or if you have a copy somewhere, you can gather with friends, family, and uh, colleagues to discuss this because this is the highest law of the land we need to understand it enough to apply to ourselves sarah please talk to us about the local government system and the mode of creation of states now please everyone understand that we are just still in the introduction so to speak this is still just the general provision as we go along with two part two part three and part four maybe even part five we will dig you know what's the word flesh out even more because it is imperative 
that we understand this. I am sure when you were in school, you didn't understand the constitution in four weeks. Mm -hmm. not <laughs> <laughs> it, was not <laughs> it was not in four Sundays, two hours in four Sundays or five Sundays. No, we are just trying to compress it with the take home assignment that each of us should still go back in our little groups to look at it because it is clear already there needs to be some adjustments there needs to be some amendments and possibly um, a total overhaul but how can we overhaul what we don't know already sarah please talk to us about the local government system and the mode of creation of new states thank you All right, thank you. Thank you, because in the course of the conversation in the coming weeks, we would um, see these things in details. We have talked about the federal government, we have talked about the state government, and it is also important to know that local governments are also recognized in the constitution, right? So we have local government councils, and the system is run by democratically elected council members right and um, the functions of the local government um aside the uh, being involved in economic planning and development economic planning and development and they are also they also regulate things like births and debt and marriage certificate and registration sorry they also you know um they also regulate and licensing for red, radio and um, billboards and all whatnot. They all, if, if you look at the fourth shadow to the constitution, it outlines all the functions of local government council. I mean, ranging from collection of rates, radio and television licenses to establishment and maintenance of cemeteries and burial grounds and home for the destitute. I mean, to uh, maintenance, First of all, establishment and maintenance of markets and slaughterhouses. And I have talked about registration of birth and death and marriage. And um, yeah, those are some of the functions like, like we have been reiterating, like we have been saying from the beginning, everybody needs to go back and look at this constitution. I mean, there's just a lot and it is important that we know some of the basics and then it would help us going forward. So if you look at the fourth schedule, you'll see where all the functions of um, local government council are highlighted. I have mentioned a few. They also control and regulate outdoor advertising, even though we have um, issues where um, state governments are regulating, um, local governments are saying, oh, this is our power. At the end of the day, it is the judiciary that would actually interpret and, you know, to shed light on what is supposed to be what and what is not meant to be what yeah so um the if you look if you also look through section seven sub six now and um, this is talking about the funding of local government they are the national assembly is to make provisions for statutory allocation of public revenue to local governments the state houses of assembly are also to make statutory allocations of um, public revenue for local governments so yes local governments are recognized under the constitution and yes they have functions as i have highlighted and you can see them on the fourth schedule of the constitution including the involvement in economic planning and development and you can see the other functions there and they are also properly the, the funding of the local government is also adequately provided in the constitution as we have already seen in section seven sub six right yes paragraph a, paragraph a wow, 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 wow. hey do you know this is the first time in my life that i think i am kind of understanding what people talk about when they say double taxation when they say you know the state has taxed me the local government is also taxing me you want to pay your uh, well let me say risa risa because i know it in port Harcourt is rivers 
something something of advertising so it's like risa mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because i lived in portaco for a long time some people say we want to pay our risa fee for advertising then somebody says eh but when you pay to state local government will still come to ask you for theirs so double payment these are the issues that are arising from our understanding of the obviously flawed process. <laughs> we need to make some adjustments. One quick adjustment we'll make right now is to call Nonso up to tell us about the alteration of the constitution and prohibition of state religion. When Chairman Mao, Sarah, thank you. Everybody, please appreciate Sarah. I'm going to yes, let please. her go backstage and bring Nonso back up. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. When Chairman Mao, uh, Mawia said earlier that something, something about state religion, I was like, state religion, what does state religion mean? I, I, I don't, I don't know that I've heard state religion before. No, so please unmute yourself so that you can talk to us about. Okay. Wh which section are we going to now and which subsection? Yes, yes, it's the it's a, it's 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 in one word, and in order to make it so clear, in section ten that the government of federation of or of a state shall not adopt any religion as a state religion. So it's a clear so, provision. It's a clear provision so for us to say that have Lagos State has yes. Lagos State as a state is a Christian mm -hmm. state. We can't say that. No. We cannot say that. Neither can we say it's a Muslim state. It's a Muslim state, yes. So people are relatively go with that contention. One thing is to operate a particular system of law, but to say as a state, you are adopting it as a religion to the extent that... No. So you also to... mean that Katsina state, for example, cannot say it's a Muslim state? No, it cannot say it's a Muslim state. Oh, Yes, that was not prohibited from applying Sharia laws, which the Kasna State uh, uh, House of Assembly State House of Assembly stated laws, but to adopt it as a religion of the states, that would be unconstitutional. It's not allowed. Yes. All right. I'm sure people are learning. I'm learning. You know, I I feel so enlightened. Me, while we're just still doing general provisions, we've not yes. even entered. And I already and feel to allay our think... fears for people that are afraid that they were about to Islamize us. Sorry, your constitution says we cannot adopt. So if they want to Islamize you, they will have to start by changing the constitution. Changing the constitution. What to talk about? They have to start by altering the constitution. Yes, and talk about talk about that alteration of the constitution. Let me not a that's why for how many years we've just had four alterations. It's not easy to come by. To in you know, question, which we can see in section nine of the constitution, because it's a rigid constitution. Part of the reason why it's a rigid constitution is that the procedure for altering it is really, really an onerous one. It's not what you can wake up one day and change. Um, just like the constitution itself has says, you cannot govern Nigeria in any other way other than by the provisions of the constitution. I hope we know what that provision was alluding. I think that's around the let's just just sorry to take us back the beginning of the provisions around section two of, of the of the constitution or section one subsection two is that we know how military and men can take you know, this kind of chaos we have it was in the past it was enough for us to come one day in the radio and hear some jingles and next time we want to hear announcements and announcements. So the any uh, and also to tell us any of the agitations, anything you want to change, the constitution has said, well, you are free to change, Joe, but you have to follow the procedure of the constitution. There have to be a, a, an initiation of that procedure of change by the National Assembly. The National Assembly has to take that initiative to introduce it. And even after they have introduced it, it will be important to take nothing less than two third majorities. Eh, of all the members of the House of Assembly of that house of the states of various states, so to tell of the states, six states of the, of the federation, the National Industrial Court, for instance, eh, the people that championed those amendments. The president was speaking the other day at the opening of Lega Year events. They have to take a lot, do a lot of work to go around the state to get that buy-in. 
Now, but if it has to do with Section 8 of the Constitution, which talks about uh, boundaries and state creation, and then Chapter 4, which talks about your rights, uh, it even imposes an even more onerous burden of altering the provisions of the Constitution by saying that you will need a four-fifth, four over five, not two over three now, majority of all the members of each of the House, you know, to approve a resolution or a resolution of the house of the house of assembly uh, of not less than two third of all the states so you the, the constitution has a very rigid way of making any changes in it and so uh, nothing has changed uh, so much yet what we are seeing are certain acts and certain elements that are not in line with the constitution and it is up to us to understand that the constitution does not accommodate uh, some of this that and for us to hold uh, hold on firm and uh, stand up to our right to see what well, the constitution allows you to introduce these things by way of constitutional alterations in event that those alterations have not been made those things are not laws that we are going to obey thank okay. you hey thank you very much this difficulty and rigidity of the constitution is this how it is across the world yes for nations that operate a uh, rigid constitution you see there are various ways of classifying nations they are also the written rigid constitution and the nations that operate on written constitutions like the westminster uh, parliamentary system of, of government for nations and coming again given the people that we copied it from in 1979 it appears that their constitution is rigid and we said well we to make our own rigid since uh, we are copying your system of government the point is it made the point made is if you are copying a system of government you must carefully also go and copy what is making that system work which is their rigid constitution that's exactly what we did rigid constitution okay we have a few minutes to go but we still have one last thing to discuss today which is public order and implementation of treaties just an introduction to it in the course of the weeks we will talk about it in detail when i saw this here public order what something that stuck to me or well, you know came what's the word something that's what's the word came to me was a video that went around today a gentleman I, I i didn't care to watch the video so long i i think i just watched the first two minutes of when i dropped it a gentleman somewhere in southwest nigeria who was warning people from southeast nigeria to leave between friday and sunday and saying if they don't leave something 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 will happen then i see here public order and I think such threats come under public order. So, Chairman Mao, Mawia, talk to us about what the Constitution has for us, what provisions the Constitution makes about public order and implementation of treaties by way of introduction. Okay, so um, I will be as snappy as I, as I can. Um, Yes, you are not. It's not out of place if you say the essence of that provision is to take care of such threats by um, either people within or our um, external um, or by external um, threats, you no know, internal threats. Now, um, the constitution um, anticipates that there may be need for us to have um, laws to in areas that have to do with public order and um, security. Now, it's specifically now confers power on the National Assembly to make laws with respect to maintenance of public peace and public order. However, um, the fact that it is conferred on the National Assembly, the Constitution also deemed it necessary not to restrict those powers to only the National Assembly. By the Constitution 2, it also conferred the same powers on the State Houses of Assembly. However, one of the areas that is restricted to the um, National Assembly is areas where the federal government or the federation is at war or is going to war. Such areas are exclusively for the National Assembly on the issues that have to do with when it is necessary or expedient for the purpose of defense of the federation. Don't forget the president is the commander-in-chief and therefore which it, it makes it necessary that 
it is only the national assembly that should make laws when it is necessary or expedient for the purpose of defense of the federation now that particular section also make provision to take care of situation where there is a, a, a kind of a circumstance when a state house or assembly cannot function for some reasons in such instances or in such situation the national assembly is empowered to make laws for the purpose of um, public order and public peace to govern or to take care of the needs of the state however such laws that should be made by the national assembly they cannot make laws to, or they cannot exercise such powers of removing the governor of the state and a state house of assembly cannot be said not to function or to not to sit and perform its business if it can be able to meet to transact its business so far there is possibility of the members to sit down and meet it cannot be said that the state house assembly cannot function or cannot perform its function now um the other section with respect to this particular area is the implementation of um treaties which is the provision of section 12. um once there is a treaty between nigeria and any other foreign country or any other country that law or that treaty does not become law that is binding on nigerians or nigeria unless it is ratified by our um assemblies now what do we mean by ratification it means passing it as a law as a local law in nigeria for it to become a law that is binding on every nigeria so the fact that i sign an agreement or nigeria sign an agreement with um japan or any other country that doesn't make it a law in nigeria unless it is passed by the national assembly now once it is passed hmm, it becomes law however there must be a concurrence or there must be a simple um majority or there must be ratification by majority of the state houses of assembly before it becomes law because it is anticipated that once it is ratified it is become binding on even the state so for the state to be governed by those law the state house of assembly must by majority ratify the law but maybe um we just leave it uh, for the purpose of introduction when we have the opportunity we can discuss it in detail and elaborate them wow thank you so much so when we hear people say things like you know they should just change this law and they should just do this it shows ignorance it shows <laughs> ignorance of what has been provided for and the rigidity of the system itself and yeah. i have said made statements like that several times you know they should just change you know we should just you it's, there's no just we need to understand it and pursue the system i'm looking at the table of content of the of the uh, constitution Today, we have only talked about chapter, we've only visited chapter one, which is general provisions. And there are eight chapters, which we will break down. Some of the chapters don't have so much in there. Some have quite a bit to discuss. Chapter two, which we'll discuss next Sunday, it will be fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy. Chapter three, citizenship. Chapter four, fundamental rights. Chapter five, the legislature. Chapter six, the executive. Chapter seven, the judicature. And chapter eight, the federal capital territory, Abuja, and general supplementary provisions. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I'm, I'm proud of the Nigeria that we are building. I'm proud of the Nigerians we are becoming, more responsible, more enlightened Nigerians. We won't just say, well, I'm not a lawyer. Eh, so does the, rule, the law guide only lawyers? No, it guides all of us, even though lawyers are part of the interpreters of the law. Am I correct? <laughs> we are advocates, so we are still in the process of interpretation. We are still we are in the process of interpretation, yes. yes yes you're still in the process of interpretation thank you thank you for interpreting to us today thank you for right. advocating for us today chairman mao mozart and our special summary sarah thank you thank you for your time thank you for your energy thank you for your commitment for all, to all of us who have shown up live today who are watching the replay or thank you take responsibility for 
the understanding of the supreme law that guides the land called Nigeria. So that where we see inconsistencies between the law and our realities, we will take the responsibility to find out how to get it adjusted or amended. I'm sure somewhere in the discourse over the next few weeks, we'll even see the responsibilities we have and how we can make these things happen. Yes, yes. is it in here somewhere? Yes, yes, yes. we do. So we'll get there. Thank you for being here. My name is Joyce Daniels, and it's been an honor and a privilege to moderate this session today. See you next Sunday. Everybody say bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B